Hello and welcome back to the uh, Turbo Newscast. Uh, this thing we do. Part two of section one. We're going to start out this section with a question. Why the fuck do I not live in Kansas <laughs> City? I know. Google Fiber is now live in Kansas City. Reporting real world speeds of 700 megabits per second. I know, and it's like it's like almost that much to upload too. 700 megabits per second, nearly parallel. Yeah, that's like the greatest thing ever. Now, they were they're offering one gigabit per second for $70 a month. Dude, I would buy that. I would buy the shit out of that. <laughs> I would buy two of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, now... I would, I would buy that for someone else. <laughs> now, like I said, they're offering gigabit. The gigabit service is reporting 700 megabit per second. But, keep in mind, speedtest.net itself isn't ready to handle gigabit per second speeds. Oh my god. <laughs> so they kind of broke speedtest.net. <laughs> that is glorious. That is beautiful. <laughs> Give me that now. I know. Google, we need you here and over in Cliff's area too. I want Google Fiber. <laughs> I want it now. Oh, it sounds oh. so nice. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm sitting over here with 15 up. Or no, fifteen down, uh, eight up, something like that. I can't remember. <sighs> it's not a gigabit. <laughs> not even close. <sighs> Just give me all of it right now. What would you even do with a gigabit? Didn't we talk about this when we talked about like? I don't even a care. Terabit. I don't even care. We're talking about this again. What would you do with a gigabit? Um, well, first of all, I wouldn't have to freaking be spending all night uploading stuff. I could be done in seconds. No, you'd still have to be spending all night uploading stuff because YouTube would need No, wait. No, YouTube is Google. Never mind. No, you wouldn't. I yeah, exactly. I'd be done in seconds. <laughs> The uh, first thing that comes to my head is all of the porn. All of it. <laughs> God damn it, Cliff. I'm sorry, but all of it. <laughs> you could have Pornhub open in like three different browsers in like eight tabs on each browser. <laughs> <laughs> Is it too late to back out of this deal? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, this... I wouldn't have any problems with Pandora. I could stream in 1080p... Deluxe... <laughs> Deluxe. <laughs> high definition, Whatever high def. <laughs> yeah, I would get high definition of the high definition... <laughs> and you would restream that. So each like each pixel would be in 1080p. <laughs> you could stream yourself multiple times. Uh, yeah, I could I could stream to everything. Good god. You could yeah. I could run like 80 different servers all just I could have an oven sitting back there, just 
made out of servers that are all active. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. There you go. <laughs> You can I need, do anything. I need gigabit. I need gigabit. <laughs> oh, Kickstarter, uh, get me to Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a hilarious Kickstarter. Uh... Yeah, streaming more pixels than are physically possible. Oh, Sam, the fact that Gigabit exists baffles me, or baffles you. The fact that Terabit is a scientific thing that also exists. That should blow your mind, then. <laughs> dude, dude, get on that and then give it to me. I, I can barely think of what I'd do with a Gigabit. What the hell would I do with a Terabit? <laughs> At that point, you'd kind of have to start streaming everything. You just open up. I like, would just walk around, and my entire life would be a stream. If you had terabit, you'd have to invest in a wall of monitors and just have everything with like eight different streams from Twitch open. All yeah. of them muted, but all of them showing things. All in the highest resolution possible. Yeah, you could download the internet. <laughs> the internet. I will just download that right now. Uh, the future is now. Give me it. <laughs> That's going to be my new slogan. The future is now. Give me it. <laughs> the future is now. Now let me have it. <laughs> Stream my brain? I don't know uh... how that works. Well, Australia sure is uh, trying to keep away from the uh, future. At least they okay, were. Right. Um, Australia's controversial mandatory ISP filtering is now off the table, though. Is there a more boring face than that right there? Yeah, I know. He's just kind of like, yeah, picture. All right. Picture what? Uh, uh. Yeah, have you taken the picture yet? I'm tired of looking bored. I'm tired of looking bored. <laughs> Wait, that implies you have another face. <laughs> this, is, this is taking more effort than I wanted to. Um, the uh, Australian government has announced that they will no longer pursue the Clean Feed, a uh, mandatory ISP filtering program riddled with problems and ethical concerns. It has been axed, shafted, given the boot, killed off. Pick a phrase, any phrase! Um, but yes, the uh, filter's best friend, Senator uh, Stephen Conroy, issued a statement to this effect today. Um, he said, or no, sorry, I can't find his statement. You guys are terrible at this. He issued a statement. What statement? Can I see the statement? Okay, please. do I have to say please? Please, please. can I see the statement? No. I guess not. Oh well. Okay, fuck you too. <laughs> well, um... Now... The filter has been taken off the, uh, or the initiative has been taken off the table, but there will still be some level of filtering required from, the, from ISPs. Um, in this case, ISPs are required to block child abuse websites that appear on Interpol's block list. Um, apparently that's required under the Telecommunications Act of 1977. Which, when you put it that way, that's not that bad. I can handle that. It's on Interpol's fucking block list. They've got to have done something wrong to be on Interpol's block list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just the child abuse websites that are on Interpol's web block list. It's not even all of them. It's just 
the child abuse ones. Um, clean feed would have blocked anything refused uh, anything refused class uh, classification in Australia. Uh. Which that would have kind of been a lot of things. I'm just looking at this this story on the side, Kim dot com. Oh, free internet. Fuck Kim dot com. But free internet. I don't even care. <laughs> fuck him. I'm just saying, free internets. Oh, uh, we're gonna move over to porn now because oh. <laughs> we've been talking about yes. it for long enough. Yes, Kim dot com. Uh, but porn. Woo. We've been totally talking about that. porn long enough, we might as well bring up the story about it. So, porn sites appear in Islamic countries' most visited online rankings. Yes. At least five pornographic websites are among Egypt's top 100 frequently visited online destinations this year, according to Alexa. <laughs> Um, now, in case you're wondering, the ranking numbers are number 15, 23, 29, 67, and 83. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a list of what sites those are. Wouldn't it have been hilarious if it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? That would have been the greatest thing ever. Just... <laughs> <laughs> nope, not Google. Porn. <laughs> like, how is that even possible? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, that's just in Egypt. In Tunisia... Oh my gosh. You've got seven... <laughs> Numbers uh, 14, 16, 20, 49, 60, 93, and 97. Um, now, in Lebanon, you've got... You're a little bit lower down the list. You don't have any of the teens. Um, you've got... You've still got five, though. You've got 33, 34, 45, 52, and 58. So they're all really clustered together. Instead of yeah. having two kind of disparate groupings. Um, like, everyone who's watching porn must be sharing the same porn site. Yeah. I think the best, the most hilarious part, though, porn isn't even prohibit, isn't even permitted throughout the Arab world, and yet they're the top five <laughs> in most of these places. Now, of course... Well, you know... Of course, we have to mention that Saudi Arabia and Kuwait don't have any porn sites on their top 100, but that is because they have a filtering policy which does, in fact, block the sites, which uh, is also the case at, um, in most countries in the Gulf. Yeah. Still, it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> we just had to go there. Just had to stray away from uh, the, the good, clean topics and go to the internet, basically. Well, if you want to go back to the good, clean topics... Oh, God, no. Let's go back to the porn. <laughs> <laughs> nope. You said good, clean topics. So, Facebook has introduced couples pages. Oh... Yep. That's that's gonna leave a mark. Yep. <laughs> uh Facebook has unveiled a new feature, pages for couples. Um many people on the internet have reacted by complaining that the idea is sickening. Yeah. Um now of course I have to bash I have to kind of hate on the reporter here. Because the next line, in fact, is, uh, maybe they're just single and jealous. You know what? Fuck you, Amy Silverstein. Fuck <laughs> you. But see these? Such a great see last that name. one? And see that one? These are both 
for you. But she has such a great last name. <sighs> I'm single. I ain't even jealous. And I'm still kind of annoyed, but I'm just annoyed should, at Facebook no, you should in general. create a general. couple page for yourself, and then just be you and yourself. But, uh, yeah. Now, the, uh, the link, in case you're curious, the link facebook.com slash us um, takes you on a virtual tour of your love life with uh, oh. photos, wall posts, and photo oh, comments God. shared between you and the person you are Facebook official, and I hate that that is a term. With You better not separate. Yep. Because it'll be immortalized. Yeah. I feel kind of nasty just saying Facebook official. <sighs> Well, <laughs> maybe I'm just single and not jealous. Oh, no, I'm single and just disgusted. <laughs> Past the barf bag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the toilet to puke. <laughs> now, I think the most interesting part here is that they're kind of... Uh, they're kind of reinforcing the monogamy aspect here, because if I remember right, Facebook doesn't let you be in multiple relationships. Mm. And this kind of points to it, because it's not a custom address. It's just facebook.com slash us. Mm. You know, I kind of want to make a mock one now. Yeah. I don't know who I'd couple with, but I want to make a mock one. I don't have a Facebook, so I don't have to worry about it. Well, you don't have to worry about a lot of things because you don't have Facebook. Exactly! The best thing ever. Um, I'm somewhere in between. I think it's just stupid. Well, you want to talk about uh, things that I don't have to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Apple has <laughs> indeed been ordered to pay Samsung's UK legal fees. We've been covering this story for a while. Um, a long while, much to Zayla's chagrin. <laughs> when will it end? Just... Is, um, is Apple ever going to do what it's ordered to, or are they just going to be like, nah, just keep stacking on those legal fees. We won't pay them ever. Well, um... They have indeed been ordered to pay Samsung's UK legal fees for embellishing the court-ordered part statement, part apology, with additional details, which were highly criticized by the court for being false and misleading. Um, the Court of Appeals lambasting of Apple comes after the company had first been ordered to issue a statement on their website and in a number of UK print um, publications to note that Samsung did not, in fact, copy the iPad in the UK. Um, yeah, according to this new court order issued uh, Friday the something, um, Judge Robin Jacob noted that in the embellished statement... Apple tried to lessen the UK court defeat by comparing similar cases in other jurisdictions, notably Germany, wider Europe, and the United States, where Apple had indeed won rulings against Samsung. Um, Apple's statement noted that, quote, in a case tried in Germany regarding the same patent, the court found that Samsung engaged in unfair competition by copying the iPad design, unquote. Um, Jacob actually dubbed this false saying, no patent of any kind has been involved in Germany or here, still less the same patent, he noted. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's read and analyzed this entire statement and gone through line by line. <laughs> Oh man! It's like a literary critique, 
but uh, so much more amazing. <laughs> that's that's one piece of literature I'm not gonna read. Oh, I would. I'm not. No, no. I want this to be done. End this. I don't care who wins. Just just leave me alone. Um, he has ordered that Apple should pay the legal fees for Samsung's defense as a result of the repeated failures um, to comply. As to the uh, costs to be awarded against Apple, we concluded that they should be on an, indem an indemnity base. Such a basis, which is higher than the normal standard basis, can be awarded as a mark of the court's disapproval of a party's conduct, particularly in relation to its respect for an order of the court. Apple's conduct warranty warranted such an order. I like this judge. I just can't not like this judge. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. Can we be done with this now? Can we just forget Apple exists and no? Because go home? we have to come to the we have to come right back to the United States now. Where uh, Apple and Samsung are fighting it out once more. Oh my gosh. Well, will be, at least, uh, on December 7th. Um, Lucy Ko has said that she will indeed consider um, Samsung's concern that the foreman of the jury has concealed relevant information. Um, the jury, as... Uh, as we've covered, the jury decided that um, Samsung must pay Apple $1.05 billion for infringing several of their patents. Um, however, Samsung is asking for a new trial, um, alleging that the foreman was untruthful and biased. Um, and... Yeah... They're saying not only the foreman was biased, but um, Apple held back some uh, information about the jury foreman because they're saying Apple knew that the foreman was biased, but they didn't say anything about it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yes, the uh, court will address Samsung's motion to compel at a December 6th hearing. If the court grants the motion, it will likely order supplemental briefing before ruling on Samsung's motion. She still has to uh, rule on whether or not they actually have to pay the $1.5 billion. Do you think that anyone in this case has just been like, I'm done and booked it out of there, and like, I'm going to go work at McDonald's because this is too stressful? You know, I get the feeling Judge Co has wanted to. Like, it's really tempting to just leave and go work at McDonald's or someplace after just months of this not going anywhere. Yeah, I I really am surprised she hasn't just been like, okay, you know what, guys? Fuck this shit. I'm out. I'm gonna go work at... I'm gonna go uh, pick up that, that fry, uh... the... the whatever the fuck it is over at the local McDonald's. <laughs> I'm surprised the she items. hasn't just... I'm surprised she hasn't just been like, fuck it, I'm out. If you need me, I'm over there at Jack in the Box. <laughs> at Jack in the Box. I've been to one of those, surprisingly. Call me... You don't have them over here, though. Call me when you guys can, figure, can sort this shit out. Your own goddamn selves. Yourself. <laughs> Call me when you oh, guys can be adults really about this. Feel really bad for her. Mm hmm. And at the same time. She better get a raise. At the same time, I really kind of. I'm going to say her. that they both owe her. I yeah. think they both <laughs> owe her $1.5 million. That would be the greatest thing ever. Okay, you know what? No. Samsung? Okay. You guys, you guys, you don't have to pay Apple the $1.5 billion. Now, Apple, Samsung, hold on. You don't have to pay them that money. 
you both owe me that much money because for dealing with this you crap guys. for six months. <laughs> Wouldn't that be like the gr we'd have to report on that? Yes. Either... <laughs> and his internet's all derp. <laughs> we will wait just. Yeah. There you go. What'd you say? You would have to report on that. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't be an option. Yeah, that would... You would enjoy that. <laughs> I would enjoy that. Oh, that... I really want to see that story. Because that would be probably my favorite like, story. Like, that would that be an amazing onion story. Uh-huh. Oh my god, that yes. That How has that not onion. been an onion story yet? <laughs> <laughs> I might make that now. <laughs> yeah. All uh. right. Um, well, we're going to go from uh, the... We're going to go from one popular whipping boy to another. Microsoft has confirmed that uh, DirectX 11.1 will be a Windows 8 exclusive. Why? Um, because fuck you. That's why. Yes. Um, Daniel Moth has written on the Microsoft Answers forum that DirectX 11.1 is part of Windows 8, as DirectX 11 was a part of Windows 7 when it launched. Unlike with DirectX 11, however, which was retrofitted to work with Vista, Quote, there is no plan for DirectX 11.1 to be made available on Windows 7. Unquote. Well, as long as they make it for Windows 2003. <laughs> so, what exactly does it add? Um, well, there's a lot of supported features for the 3D graphics API. Most of these are of little interest to gamers. One, however, is that it adds native stereoscopic 3D support. Translate, that means that any PC game or application written with DirectX 11.1 will have support for viewing the content via stereoscopic 3D glasses by default. That means you don't have to program them with specific graphics know. cards in in mind. I don't need it. I I agree. I'm not using 3D, so. No, I'm good. That I'm just not, bugs me. I have a specific reason why I'm not using 3D. I'm not using 3D because if I use 3D, y'all would know on the stream. Because I do all of my gaming on a stream. And yeah. I would have the reflection right here. And that pisses me off. Well, that's why I don't wear my glasses right now. Otherwise, I'd be asking you what pill you want. <laughs> okay, Morpheus. Oh, well. We're going to close off with a pretty neat story. Just to kind of recover Did you from say the... meat, a pretty meat story or a pretty neat a pretty bacon story mm. um oh damn it cliff you're welcome we're going to close off uh, with a pretty neat story just to kind of counter the 11.1 story over here um google apparently wants to be a wireless carrier They are uh, reportedly in talks um, with satellite television provider Dish Network regarding the possibility of a venture that would see uh, Google launch their own cellular network and compete directly with Verizon and AT&T. Well, they're already everything else, so why not? The Wall Street Journal says the talks are not in advanced stages and could lead nowhere. But Dish did confirm that they are discussing, discussing the launch of a new cellular network using their spectrum with a number of potential partners who would like to be in the industry. And then the world! I, for one, welcome our new Google overlords. Yes. 
<laughs> because you know what? If Google Fiber is any indication... <laughs> I would welcome our overlord just for the internet that they provide. Google Wireless is gonna have some pretty badass coverage. <laughs> Yeah. So go right ahead. <laughs> go right ahead. I don't care how, how much of a dictator you are. As long as you provide me with one gigabyte of upload, please. Gigabit. Gigabit, sorry. There is a difference. There is a much... There is a lot of a difference. Gigabit, oh, I'm tired. Gigabit is one-eighth of a gigabyte. You know I'm tired, right? Yes, I do. It, actually, I can't remember if it's one eighth or one tenth or it's one something. One fraction. You can never be wrong by saying that. Um, as an interesting aside, that's actually uh, that's why if you're at, if you get um, if you're advertised like a uh, twenty five down five up, and then you go on to uh. You speed net or speedtest.net and you get like a four down. It's because you were advertised megabit. They're showing you megabyte. Mm -hmm. Or it, it might be backwards. I can't remember the. Uh, I can't remember which way it is. Um, which way? Um, but yeah. <laughs> I'll talk talk with Cliff. Ah, uh, this is Tuesday Tech Talk. <laughs> oh, boy. You, already, you just watched uh, that today, didn't you? Anyways, yes, I that's did. A, that's Five not the hours point. ago. That's not the point, anyways. Should... Probably should continue on with our own show. Uh, yes. I'm not Nash or Lord Cat as much as I wish. You can be both at the same time. <laughs> you have the beard to be Nash. and Almost. I am working... Very hard on that. You're almost halfway in between them, actually, in terms of looks. Yeah, I already had Lord Cat's uh, goatee. Now, because of yeah. No Shave November, I'm starting on Nash's side. Uh... You're like halfway in between them, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got the long hair. I need the uh, Brooklyn accent now. <laughs> It'd be funny if, if you were, like, on there, and they had, like, Lord Cat on one side and Nash on the other side, and you're just in the middle. Uh-huh. And it's just like, wow, look at the... Tra <laughs> <laughs> uh, the transformation. Well... It's uncanny. We will be right back after this... On that uh, note. <laughs> after this short break before, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we will be right back after this short break. Um, stay tuned. <laughs> 